Hi, and welcome to the Product Beat Show. The Product Beat Show goes live every Tuesday, 8.27 to 8.57 a.m. Central European time. To get weekly invites, become a member in our competence center at productbeats.heartland.com. There you can also find the reflections and the presentation, as well as our other recordings. Now, enjoy the show and hope to see you in the future. And three months ago, I read an article in Medium by Martin Dalmain from Holland. Martin had written how products people can be inspired by total football. I was intrigued. I needed to speak with Martin and dig into his thought. Does he possess some Dutch secrets and wisdom? Is there more to total football than we, that we could use? And how did Johan Cruyff evolve this concept? So product friends. I am proud to introduce one of the editors at Medium for a serious scrum, the upcoming author, the product owner at the Danish company bestseller, and dare I say, the product thinker, Martin Dalmain. <laughs> clap, clap, clap. You can see, yes. Are there good any morning. digital? Good morning, Martin. Good morning. Uh, now, Martin, one quick, fast question. Why is Holland the best in the world in football? No, 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 we will not. <laughs> I will not let you answer that one. It would aggravate all of our listeners and viewers. Instead, let's ask another question. Is, is, is the philosophy of Johan Cruyff and total football something that is well used in Holland? Uh, do people know about it? Or is it something that only football nerds know about? I think people know a lot about it because Johan Cruyff is very famous and his thinking is very famous. So most people do know about it. Maybe they might not, not know all the details, but they definitely have heard it. That's what I think, at least. Yeah. And I, 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 th I find it interesting that uh, Johan Cruyff, he left uh, to Spain in the 1980s, right? Yes, correct. And he played football in the 1970s. Correct. Kind of and he... But he's very, very appreciated and, uh, uh, and very much living and influencing the Dutch society, if I understand you correct. correct. He, yes, he's, he's uh, yeah, a very famous Dutch person, and not because of his football playing. I mean, that played a role, but also because of way of thinking, his rebellious way of thinking, let's put it that way. Okay, so let's see, Martin. Let's be inspired by you and Cruyff, and let's be inspired by Martin Dalmain this morning. Uh, on um, a little bit of rebellious product thinking then. Let's see if you can make your screen seen to yeah. the audience here, Martin. I will share my screen. I will click the button. It's not working, which is always nice. Ah, now it's working. Now, let's see. I'll... Yes, now we can see it nicely. Martin, the screen is yours. Good morning, everyone. So yeah, I'm gonna be talking about Joan Crive and product management. Before I start, I want to stress, I'm going to talk about Johan Cruyff a lot. I promise to tie it all back to product management, so please be patient with me. And uh, I finally have an excuse to use a lot of orange, so you'll see that a lot in the presentation. So I apologize already, but I'm a proud Dutch guy. So just to refresh your memory uh, of the audience, he basically is the undisputed best Dutch footballer ever. He was the best player in the world three times, Ballon d'Or winner. He was the coach of the Barcelona Dream Team and won the Barcelona's first Champions League. And he was the greatest Dutchman. Paul, he was six. He beat Anne Frank and Van Gogh. And I can tell you one thing. You don't get nominated in the greatest Dutchman pool ever just by being just be a footballer. He was more than a footballer. He was a thinker and he influenced the way of thinking. In the Netherlands, he's very famous for his, for his quotes and his, uh, his original sayings. This is an example of a saying, Italians can't win the game against you, but you can lose the game against the Italians. And uh, yeah, the, the, he, he wanted teams to play beautiful football and it, Italians played very defensive football. And yeah, if you would lose against a team like that, then uh, you wouldn't be losing because at least you played attractive football. That's how I interpret it at least. I hope I'm not offending any Italian people. Here's another example uh, of a response he gave to uh, someone, a journalist, I believe. 
So uh, this just shows he's a very courageous person. He's not afraid to speak his mind. And uh, he says something very simple, but it, it, it's much deeper than that. And that's, that's John Cruyff. And that's why he's so famous in the Netherlands. So Johan Cruyff is known for his uh, beautiful goals, uh, but that's not actually not how he became great. So he actually started playing baseball, which I don't think a lot of people know until he was like 15. And that had a profound influence because it created the spatial awareness. Because if you play baseball, you need to have eyes in the back of your head. You need to be constantly aware. Where does, where's the ball? Where are all the players? And you need to make the decision at the right moment. Otherwise, they'll score a point. And here's a quote actually from John Cruyff itself, where he said it had a profound impact on his field of vision. Another surprising fact is he was actually second keeper of Ajax in some matches, which blew my mind because he's not a tall guy. He's 180, which is uh, 5'11". And uh, here's also a quote from him, like goalkeeping, according to John Cruyff, was mostly a matter of vision and the fact of and reading the game. And he was 180 and he was very thin, right? So he was still a great goalkeeper and that's because he read the game so well. And I think this also had a very big influence on him as a player because he was uh, an attacker playing as a goalkeeper. Yeah, and this also is very interesting. Like if you look at John Cryf, he was not the most strong, not the most athletic, not the strongest. I mean, you can see it in the picture. He was quite scrawny, but yet he was almost always the best player on the field. And I think this also had a big impact on him because it, it, it shaped his idea that to be the best, you don't need to be the strongest or the fastest. So in 74, we wish witnessed the birth of total football. Okay, birth, maybe the popularization, let's put it that way. The Hungarians gave, uh, were at the birth of total football. And uh, the Netherlands stunned the whole world by playing beautiful football, where uh, attacker, defenders could become attackers, uh, attackers became defenders, they switched positions. And yeah, the goalkeeper was basically the first uh, attacker. And yeah, prior to uh, 74, this was kind of how it was played, like 4-4-2. Four, four, uh, each position is a silo, right? Everybody had their own responsibility. The position is what matters most. Uh, you need to do the job of your position, which means if you're a defender, you need to prevent goals from being scored. If you're a forward, you need to score goals. You, you, taking initiative was discouraged. You need to follow the plan, hold your position. Um, and then in 74, right, this all changed. And basically... Positions were dynamic and fluid. So if uh, Cruyff could fall back, and other player could go forward. And everybody could change their position if it served the game. And yeah, taking initiative and making decisions in the moment. Like nobody gave the order, right, to do this. They would do it themselves. This was all encouraged. And yeah, create your own plan together. Uh, so there are no, there's no upfront plan. Like during the match, you decide what's the best approach. Yeah, and the first attacker is the goalie and the first defender is the striker. So this really revolutionized football and, and broke down the silos. So if you look at it this way, right? Traditionally, you had these silos, you had defense, offense, and midfield, and you wanted to score more goals uh, by working as a team. And, and this is what total football really changed. Like the, it blended different roles together. And if you look at it, this is a very common picture, right? About scrum teams, uh, there's a lot of thinking that we have these different responsibilities, but I actually believe that if you look at a team, the most important thing is, are we building the right thing? Of course, we need to build the thing right or build it fast as well, if, if possible. But if you're not building the right thing, the best thing is to not have built it at all. So it's your job as a PM to get everybody on the same page. How do we deliver products of the highest possible value together as a team? So going back to Joe and Cruyff, I think these things I told before, like the spatial awareness, reading the game and the timing, they shaped his, his philosophy profoundly as a player and later as a coach. So this is a very famous quote of him. So uh, basically, what is speed? So um, basically, he says, it's not about how fast you are. If you read the game well and, and, and you see something earlier than someone else, you don't need to be faster than that person. You just start faster. And then you appear faster. And this was, I think, the essence of, of his philosophy towards football. So when Cruyff arrived in Barcelona, he actually wanted to put his philosophy in, in uh, practice and was in 88. And one of the first things he actually did was, uh, this is La Masia, this is the youth uh, complex of Barcelona. And they had a test to check if you're taller than, one, if you would become at least 180 or 5'11". 
And he immediately abolished his tests because his thinking was, it's not about how strong you are, it's about how good are you at footballing. And of course, this is maybe a bit exaggeration, but I'm quite sure that Nessi, Iniesta, and Xavi would not have passed his test. So this decision, I think, had a profound influence uh, because it, it shifted from the physicality to the technique and, and being able to read the game. And, and this just shows that he followed his own philosophy. What he also did is he selected very different players than normally would have been selected. So this is here in the picture you see uh, Guardiola and uh, Kuman, and they were the central defense duo. And here's what Cruyff actually had to say about them: they weren't fast and they weren't defenders. And you, then you're thinking like, what? Like, why would you choose players like that? And that's because uh, basically they read the games well. They had such great positional strength that their footballing qualities were way more important. They wanted to play on the half of the opponent. And, and that's why it didn't matter so much. He'd rather have better footballers. Uh, and that's why this worked out so well for Barcelona. He also trained dif differently. So uh, Zubi Zareta, which was a goalkeeper, had to play as a midfielder during training to improve uh, uh, the way he played and, and, uh, and be the first attacker, right? Make, make quick decisions with the ball. And what also is very interesting, Cruyff would constantly stop the training to explain his philosophy. And this is actually a quote from Gary Lineker. Uh, basically, the, the main philosophy of Cruyff was, when you have the ball, you need to make the field large. And when you don't have the ball, you need to make everything small. And he would constantly stop the game to instill his philosophy in the players, which allowed them then during the game to make decisions based in this, on the spirit of this philosophy. So yeah, the strategy was create space when you have the ball and limit space when you don't. And this sounds very simple, right? This sounds all very simple, but this is also a quote for Cruyff. Playing simple football is the hardest thing there is. And I think everybody can agree, like it's easy to make things complicated, but if you do something well and simple, that's really hard. So this brings me to like the first lesson, like it's really important as product managers to build a whole team mindset. So if you look at teams, you have front end, back end, QA, business analyst, DevOps, UX, uh, most teams operate in silos. And I think it's uh, really important to break down these silo silos. So the goalkeeper was the first attacker. The striker was the first defender. So, so get them to be interested into each other's world. Uh, also show interest yourself in what they're doing because they will reciprocate by under trying to understand your world. And, and, and this is the only way you can get everybody on the same page on how are we delivering value uh, because if you don't show interest in them, then well, why should they show interest in you? So this is, I think is super important. And yeah, if you get them to have this understanding about the product, then get them to take initiative, uh, allow them to make decisions. And the other thing is, if they can take this initiative, they probably don't understand, right? If they come constantly to you with questions, then probably you need to spend a bit more time with them to explain your vision and, and, and how are you delivering value? And yeah, the bonus points you have, you, I mean, we can all agree that as product managers very often or product owners, we're super busy, right? Of spending a lot of time with the team. And I think your goal should be to spend as little time as possible with the team. Like they shouldn't need you. And then you have more time to analyze data, to talk to the customer. Uh, and that will only serve the product in the long term. So what's also interesting, I actually worked in Barcelona for six months and uh, I actually was sent there to help make uh, an office perform better. And actually, when I left after six months, so the, pro the performance had increased. When I left, it dropped until we hired someone new and the person got up and running. And the mistake I made, and which I realize now, is I didn't build a cathedral. And uh, this is actually what Guardiola said about Cruyff and what he left in Barcelona. He built a cathedral. It, 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 he left a legacy, so something for Barcelona to build upon. And it is up to us to maintain it. And I think this is super important, like... Uh, it should be your goal to build this cathedral so that they don't need you as much. So yeah, my vision for total product in 2020. So build, delivering valuable products is never a single person. It's a team sport. Involve other departments, involve your teams, uh, show them in, uh, show interest in what they're doing and get them to be interested in each other's world because the better they understand each other, the better solutions they can come up with. And yeah, don't limit yourself to just your team. Spread this product philosophy, this product thinking, and ultimately build your own cathedral. On losing the World Cup in 74, I want to end. This is what Cruyff had to say. For him, it, I mean, I was surprised. It was not a bitter memory. It was still a happy memory because sometimes you don't win, but you're still seen as a winner. 
and people still talk about his, his team uh, wherever he went. Unfortunately, he passed away. And yeah, thank you for listening. If you like this talk, please follow me on Medium or LinkedIn. Search for my name. Next year, I will be publishing a book on sprint goals. Yeah, please send me a message. If you struggle with sprint goals, I would love to learn from you and see how I can incorporate it in my book. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for watching this recording from the Product Beat Show. Remember to become a member in our competence center at productbeats.heartland.com to get weekly invites. All the links will be available in the description box below. You can also follow us at uh, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube. Just search Product Beats. Now, enjoy the rest of your product week and we hope to see you in the future.